Here's a short introduction to prepare us for the semester. In our work to remove suffering and its causes, we have two approaches that we're working on alternating as well as hopefully simultaneously once we become more advanced practitioners. So we have the method side of the path and the wisdom side of the path. The method side of the path are the things that we're very familiar with trying to cultivate, for example, compassion, loving kindness, patience, skillful means. Everything of that category prevents negative states of mind from arising or dispels them once they're in their infancy. And these are essential practices that we become very proficient in, in order to keep negative habits, negative states of mind and behaviors at bay. On the other hand, we have the wisdom side of the path. And the wisdom side of the path refers to the wisdom realizing the emptiness of inherent existence. And this is a higher, more complicated philosophical concept and requires a lot more study before it can be practiced in depth. But what we're trying to do is to understand it, to discuss it, to reflect on it, eventually to meditate on it, and through deep meditation and study, eventually realize it directly. This realization of emptiness is what will cut the root of samsara, what will finish suffering. So we're working on both preventing suffering and its causes, as well as uprooting the causes altogether. And now we'll do some review. We frame the topics in Buddhism in terms of the basis, the path, and the result. The basis referring to the two truths, relative or conventional truth, and absolute or ultimate truth. Then we have the path, the two wings, the method side, and the wisdom side. Having understood the basis, and practiced with a path according to that, we have the result, the two Buddha bodies, the Rupakayas, or form bodies, and the Dharmakayas, or wisdom bodies. These are also further subdivided into four. Last year we talked about the result when we explored Buddha nature. This semester we're looking at the basis and the path from the perspective of ultimate truth and the wisdom side of the path. We may have time to also touch on the result of that, which would be the Dharmakayas, the nature truth body and the wisdom truth body. We'll be exploring these concepts from the very beginning using the philosophical tenet schools. Many texts will be used during the semester, the first of which will be Virtue and Reality by Lama Zopa Rinpoche, a free publication of Lama Yeshi Wisdom Archive. In Chapter 4, Meditation on Emptiness, the tenets are first introduced. It's in the section on schools of Buddhist philosophy and the object of refutation. Lama Zopa Rinpoche says, I started this discussion by saying how everything exists as merely labeled by mind, and then went on to clarify that simply labeling things is not enough to bring them into existence. That just because something is merely labeled does not mean it exists. Then I went on to mention three things required for something to exist. A valid base, not receiving harm from another's valid mind, and not receiving harm from the wisdom realizing emptiness. Now going back to the bell. As I mentioned before, the way the bell appears to us and the way in which we believe it to exist are slightly beyond the way it actually exists, which is in mere name, as merely labeled by the mind. This difference is very subtle hallucination that in Buddhist philosophical teachings is called the object to be refuted, or the object of refutation. There are four schools of Buddhist philosophy. Vibhashika, which is called the Great Exposition School in English, Sautrantika, the Sutra school, Chittamatra, the mind-only school, and Madhyamaka, the middle way school. The fourth of these is the middle way school and is divided into two, Svatantrika, middle way autonomist, and Prasangika, middle way consequence.
According to the Prasangika school, the object of refutation or negation is an extremely subtle object that is ever so slightly more than, a little over and above, what is merely labeled by the mind. The object of refutation is what appears to us. It is that in which we believe. In order to attain liberation from the entire round of suffering and its cause, we need to cut its very root, the fundamental ignorance that keeps us in it. Of the many kinds of ignorance, which is the specific one that we have to eradicate? It is not the concept that believes the bell to exist the way it appears, which is what the texts usually describe as the root of samsara, except that in the case of the root of samsara, we should be talking about the eye, not the bell, that I've been using as an example here. When the eye appears to us, we believe that there is something slightly over and above what is merely labeled by the mind, and that is how the eye exists then we believe this is 100% true and let our mind hold on to that. It is this specific, particular ignorance that is the root of all delusion, karma, and suffering. This very one. It's not just any type of ignorance. It's this one. As well as this kind of ignorance, there's the one described by the second Madhyamaka school, the Svatantrika, that's the middle way autonomous school. The loose nation on the eye, the object to be refuted according to their view. I'm just mentioning this so that you have an idea of how trapped our minds are, how many different levels of ignorance we experience, how many kinds of hallucination there are. The hallucination on the eye that the Svatrantikas describe is grosser than the one the Prasangikas explain, the middle way consequence school. Then there's the Chittamantra's version. This is the mind-only school, where they say that the eye exists from its own side without depending on mental imprints, without the mind as creator. They describe a seventh level of consciousness. Normally we talk about just six. That is called the basis of samsara and nirvana or the mind basis of all. 
So they say that the eye exists totally from its own side, without depending on imprints left on this seventh level of consciousness, and describe it as a self-entity. According to Hindu philosophy, the eye, which they call Atman, is permanent, meaning static or unchanging. Therefore, there is a lot of discussion in Buddhist texts refuting this view, explaining that while the self may appear to us to be permanent, in fact it changes moment to moment due to causes and conditions and is therefore impermanent. If you look at your eye right now, you'll see that it appears to be permanent, whereas you know that in reality it is impermanent in nature. Other views hold, for example, that while the eye is dependent upon parts, there is the appearance and the belief that it exists alone, not dependent upon parts. Or that while the eye is dependent upon causes and conditions, there is the appearance and the belief that it exists with its own freedom, without depending on causes and conditions. These gross hallucinations are described and posited as the object of refutation by the first Buddhist school, the Vibeshika, or Great Exposition School. This school has 18 divisions, each with its own variant view. Then there's the hallucination that even though the eye exists dependent upon the group and continuity of the aggregates, it appears to us as a self-entity existing without depending on the group and continuity of the aggregates. So these are some of the positions held by the Vibhashikas, Great Exposition School, and the Sotrantika, the Sutra School, the lower Buddhist schools. How has it come that there are these four schools of Buddhist philosophy? It's due to many different ways of explaining what the eye is. In reality, emptiness is just one, not many. There is only one emptiness that directly cuts the root of samsara. This is the emptiness taught by the Prasangika Madhyamaka school, whose view of emptiness is the unmistaken pure one, and the only one that can cut the specific ignorance that I mentioned before. However, not everybody has the karma to accept this, to understand this, to realize this. Sentient beings have different levels of mind. Therefore, the all-knowing, kind, compassionate Buddha taught varying levels of philosophy to guide sentient beings' minds gradually up to the level where they could realize the Prasangika view of emptiness, the middle way consequence school. One could start with the gross explanations of emptiness, taught by the lower schools, and gradually progress up to the most subtle, the Prasangika. That's how the four schools came into being. The lower schools were steps to the higher ones, leading ultimately to the Prasangika. So even though the views of these various schools seem to contradict each other, actually, they're a method for gradually developing, through study and meditation, the Prasangika view. This excerpt was from Chapter 4, Meditation on Emptiness, pages 80 to 83, or Kindle locations, 874 to 914. In this semester, we'll also use How Things Exist by Lama Zopa Rinpoche, and A Praise to Dependent Arising by Lama Tsongkhapa, the commentary by Geshe Samton.